Hey everybody, it's Suze from Revelation Quilts. Have you ever tried curved piecing? We are going to learn how to make this curved piecing piece today. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a whole quilt with it. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You're gonna learn a new skill here if you've never tried curved piecing before. And I'm gonna take you through the very details of how to get the best results in your curved piecing. So grab some two and a half inch strips and take care of your scrap bin all at once. So let's get started. So as you can see, I have a very, very full bin of two and a half inch strips. And so let's get started. Hopefully this will make a little dent in my bin of strips. So I've pulled out two strips and I have cut them so that they are longer than 12 and a half inches or 12 and a half inches or longer, I should say. And because our final block, we're going to cut to 12 inches square. So the first thing we're going to do is I've pressed them so they're nice and flat. And as I pick them, I'm making sure that they coordinate with each other. Now you don't have to do that. That will make it even more scrappy. But for what I want to do, I want the next strip always to coordinate with the first strip. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to overlap these uh, both right sides facing up. I'm going to overlap them uh, maybe like a half inch or so. And I'm just going to, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. I'm just going to overlap them and I'm going to take my rotary cutter. I'm going to hold on to the top of the strips and I'm just going to slowly cut along here and giving it just real slight curves. And I don't want my curves to be dramatic. I just want them to have just a little slight curve because the slight curve will make a great impact. And so when I start, I want to start straight up and then just gently glide it out and then in and then out. And when I finish, I want to finish straight again. So I'm going to pull that off the top layer and I'm going to pick up the bottom and pull off that tiny little strip underneath so that when I put them back together, both right sides facing up, they are going to connect like that. And it's just got this real slight curve in it, nothing dramatic. And just go slow as you're cutting. And so I'm just giving you kind of tips that have helped me to start straight and to end straight with your cut. That will help when it comes time to sewing, to sew them together. And it, it really does help. So let's take these over to the sewing machine. We're going to flip this one over so it's right sides together. And you started straight, so you should have a nice straight seam to start with. So let's get over there and I'll show you how to sew these together. So here we are. So I've got these pieces right sides together and I'm just going to start at the top with my sewing machine and I'm going to put my needle down so that my pieces are in there. They won't ship and I'm going to grab each piece by one hand, maybe like halfway up and I'm just going to start sewing slowly. And as my pieces keeping my, my right, my quarter inch seam there. And as my pieces start to curve, I'm going to move the bottom one or the top one. But honestly, what I found is mostly I move the bottom one to match the top. So as I slowly sew, I just wanna keep, keep that lined up and I'm moving my, my bottom one over. bringing them back together and I 
promise you that the first couple are hard, but after you kind of get the hang of it, it goes pretty fast. So I'm just going slow to show you. I'm just keeping those together, moving the bottom one in and out, back and forth. So I'm starting to hit a curve again, so I'll just move it. I find that I'm always sewing in a straight line. I'm just moving my fabric so that they're always together. Sometimes it gets tricky at the end, but just hold it the best you can. And there we go. So it's, it's sewn together in a straight seam, but when you open it up, you will get a nice curve to the fabric. I'm gonna back you up just a, a bit here so I can show you how I iron it. I want all of my seams to go one way. So what works best for me is if I just kind of stab that seam in different places with my iron and then once I've got my seam allowance going the right way then I can just iron that so it's flat and it irons up pretty well so there I have my first curved piece and the curve is just super slight it's very very slight but you can definitely see it and when you put a bunch of these together it just makes a nice impact. So I'm going to take this back to my cutting board and I'm going to sew my next piece on. So let's go do that. So here's my next piece ready to go. And as I mentioned before, I try to make sure that the piece I choose coordinates with the one before it. So we've got some greens in there and then the next piece will coordinate with this piece. So I'm just going to again lay this Oh, about a half of an inch overlapping and it just you know it depends on how skinny or fat you want your strips to be um, and then I'm gonna hold it at the top which helps me a little bit I'm gonna start with a straight cut and then curve it uh, so it doesn't really match the curve before it but um, it doesn't really matter and then end straight pull the top piece off and then pull the bottom piece off. And then this one will sit right like that. And then I'm just going to take this over to the machine like before and sew this one on, moving it so that it maintains that straight stitch. So again, this is great practice for a new technique if you've never tried curved piecing. Let me go sew this one on and I'll bring it right back. So there's my third piece, my third piece is on, and I'm just gonna keep going until I've got more than 12 inches in my block. So let me do one more, just start with a straight cut, go out, go in, and end with a straight cut. Pull that out, oops, pull the bottom one out and then sew these on. So I'm gonna keep adding to this until I've got more than 12 inches long. I already know it's 12 and a half inches this way because I've cut my pieces longer than 12. I've cut them 12 and a half inches or longer. So I'm gonna sew this on and I'll come back when I've got my full one and then we'll square these up together to 12 inches. Okay, so I've got all of my things sewn together and it's more than 12 inches. So I can trim this down. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got 10 fabrics in here. And yours will vary depending on how skinny or how wide your strips, but just keep going until you've got more than 12 inches. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna even up the, the sides of the top and the bottom here or however you wanna look at it. And so I want to make sure that, and I'm using the lines on my cutting mat for my 12 inches. So I'm just lining them up to make sure that I'm going to be able to get my 12 inches 
So I'm going to start here. I'm going to trim up these sides so they're nice and square. And I'm going to turn it over and line it up again with a line on my mat so I know that that side is straight. And this is going to be kind of wonky. I mean, because you've sewn it curvy, but just let it relax and line it up there. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat and ironed out. I'm just making sure that as it's resting there, it is more than 12 inches this way. Trimming it up. All right. So now I know it's 12 inches this way. So I'm going to turn it over this way and line up the bottom with a line on my mat, making sure that I'm lined up 12 inches this way or more than 12 inches. And again, I'm just going to cut it off to make sure that it is 12 inches square. A little bit off that side. I'm going to turn it over so I am cutting safely. Lying it up. Doing the best I can. All right. And I'll cut a little bit off this side so that it is 12 inches square. And there we go. It's 12 inches square. So let's take a look up at our design wall with all of these put together. All right. So let me put this last one up here. And as you can see, I have, um, as you can see, I've alternated the way they go. So it kind of gives this, I guess, woven look. And I do like that. Um, I, I like that a lot, actually. I think that looks really neat. I think if you were to put more and more of them together like that to make like, let's say a bed size quilt, that would be super, super striking. And, but I'm not gonna make a, a bed size quilt with this. I'm going to make a large lap quilt. So I think I'm going to put some sashing on it. Although I really do like this. Let me think about this for a second. Let me see what it looks like with some sashing on it. So let's check that out. Okay, so I threw some jelly roll strips up here just to kind of get an idea of what that would look like with sashing in it. My thought was that if you throw some neutral color, especially like a black sashing in there, that that would really make each one stand out. Let me know what you like better. And then I think what I would do is I would put a black border around it. Let's see if I can get some fabric to stay up there. Kind of like this. And so that would really set off that and put a border around the whole thing. But I'm not sure, that was my original idea anyway. I do like that original kind of woven look though. I think that's almost more striking than this. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether you would put the sashing in it or not. Let me know. So after much debate, I've decided I'm just going to keep it like this. I'm gonna do it without the sashing. The other thing I thought of is that I could join the blocks together with the same curved piecing. So I could just take these two, for example, and overlap them a little bit and then do the same curved piecing to join those two together. I thought of that, but then I thought, but then when I'm done, I'm not guaranteed that everything's gonna line up at the perfect 12 inches. So I'm just gonna keep it like this because I think that straight line gives a nice divide between the ones going sideways and the ones going up and down. So let me sew these together and then I think I have an idea on what to do for the border to make it bigger. So I've got my quilt on the table here, my quilt top, and I have sewn a five inch black strip 
along as an inner border. And then the other thing I've done is I've taken a bunch of six inch, six and a half inch strips and I just made a big long row of them, mixed up the colors. And so my idea is to do the same curved piecing with the border as I did with the body of the quilt. So I'm just going to layer this over top of my border, just a little bit, just about a half of an inch or so and I'm going to pin it at the top to hold my pieces together. And as you can see, the whole thing is just weighted down with my little strip, my little um, little dumbbell. I stole that idea from Donna Jordan. And so I'm just gonna overlap it a little bit. And like I said, I'm gonna pin it at the top just so I know that it's going to stay on uh, and I'm going to end up in the right spot. So just a little pin at the top and I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm just going to go very slow. Hopefully you can see this and I'm just going to start at the bottom and just hold my pieces together and just press a little harder because you're going through seams but I'm just going to do a very slight curve and it's gonna move around a little. So if I need to take a break, I can take a break. Maybe I can, um, I can pull it down a little bit so I can reach it more. And it's okay because I've got this pin at the top holding it where it's supposed to be. So I'm just gonna move it down a little bit, put the weight back on and then go back to lining this up the way it was. Let me straighten my pin out here. There we go. And it's easy to line back up because you can see exactly where I've cut. And I'm just going to continue along holding the bottom and just very slowly just giving it a slight curve, nothing drastic. And I'm going to pull it down once again, just so I'm on my cutting mat. It stays in place pretty easily. Keeping my pin in there at the top. And again, lining it up. It just takes a little patience. There we go. Just a very slight curve. Go slow. I'm going to take my pin out of the top there and end straight. So I'm going to take my little pieces of border off and then underneath I've got my other pieces, big piece of the border. And now I'm just going to sew, line that up again to where the pieces match. And I'm going to just cut that off. So I've got extra, there we go. And now I can just take this to the machine, fold it over, like so, and sew that back on. And so, uh, and then just, just like you did with this, it's very, very simple. It just takes time a little longer than sewing a straight seam, just cause you're moving those two pieces around to get that straight seam down. So let me get this ironed on and pressed, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it turned out very nicely. It's just such a slight curve. You can actually hardly even see it, but when it's all up on the wall as a whole, it's gonna be awesome. So um, I'm gonna do it to the other four sides, the other three sides. I do not have a five-sided quilt. So I'll do it to the other three sides and then um, we'll get that up on our design wall and see how that looks as a whole. Um, 
So here's the finished product. It's, it's really neat because it does look kind of woven and the curves aren't huge. I mean, they're not uh, huge angles. They're very slight, very uh, almost not noticeable, uh, but it's the overall look. So these curves in the border, uh, that's totally optional. I wanted to try it because I'd never tried it before and I like it and I think when I quilt it, that's only going to accentuate those curves because I'll probably follow the lines of those curves with my quilting. And I really like it. It's super scrappy. It used up a good amount of scraps, especially with the, the uh, little strips around the edge. I thought about uh, waving those little strips each one of them but I thought nope that'll take way too long I don't want to do that I just wanted to give it an overall look squaring up the quilt I thought that would be uh, really hard but it really wasn't because I really only had to square the corners I didn't everything else is pretty square which kind of surprised me I thought oh this is going to be a squaring nightmare but it really wasn't I really like it. I love the way it turned out. It turned out to be, let's see, it turned out to be 66 by 54 or 54 by 66, which is a good size lap quilt. And so, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to use it. I love it. And I am going to call this the wavy woven quilt. So enjoy, give it a try. You know, anytime we learn a new skill, it's a learning curve, no pun intended. So we're gonna have to learn something new. So give yourself some patience, give yourself some time and just figure it out and learn a new skill. Well, the first time I did curved piecing, I did it, I tried it and then I put it down for about six months. But then I decided to try it again and I came up with this. So I really like it. It was an adventure for me, figuring out all the different intricate parts of it and so I want you to give it a try try something new just expand your horizons and be creative at least you if you don't like it you can say you tried it and you didn't like it but give it a shot uh, I'm Suze for Revelation Quilts please give me the thumbs up because that helps me out a bunch and share it subscribe happy happy quilting this is Suze signing out mm -hmm.